Okay, thank you. So, yes, this is the first uh, webinar for uh, this year for BREC DCAT AP and access to base registries. Thank you very much for joining. It's been a while since the community gathered to discuss uh, uh, the news in this um, area. So, uh, I would uh, like to pass the floor to my colleague Claudio, who will guide you through the webinar. He's going to provide some practicalities related to how to connect and how to uh, interact during the webinar. He will provide uh, the agenda, explain the objectives, and we will proceed with the planned discussion. Thank you. And Claudio, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Anastasia. And good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, yeah, as mentioned by Anastasia, before starting, a few ground rules for the webinar, but you're probably all familiar with this. So please uh, check your audio connection and keep your microphone uh, off if you're not speaking. You, you are, uh, of course, invited to uh, write your uh, questions or comments in the, in the, in the chat. Okay. Uh, and we will uh, we will try to answer your questions during the Q&A session and the discussion that we will have at the end. If you have any issue, you, you can contact the host privately via chat or via email. Uh, and yeah, as Anastasia already mentioned, we are uh, recording this webinar in order to make it available for those that couldn't make it today um, online and most probably on the YouTube channel of Interoperable Europe. So, uh, the webinar flow today will be uh, will consist in a, in a few presentations, and at the end we will have um, a Q and A session, and in general a discussion related to Reg uh, But if you would really like to contribute in a specific moment, or maybe at the end of one of the presentations, you can raise your hand, and uh, if time allows, we will try to give you the floor um, to ask a question or to uh, provide some inputs from your side. The agenda of the day of this uh, of this webinar. So um, we will quickly we will shortly move to provide you the objectives of the webinar, and then uh, we will provide you some updates, some updates for the base registries community uh, related to the last developments, and then move to the core of our webinar to discuss Brexit ATP, and in particular. First, we will provide you a, an overview of what was the purpose, uh, what is the current status of Reddit ATP uh, and its, uh, and its uh, creation. And then we would like to discuss with you some possible scenarios for uh, the future. Uh, and at the end, we will wrap up and give you some view on the, on the next steps of the ABR community and of the SEMI community. So the agenda, uh, the objectives of the webinar. Um, as, uh, as you probably already know, we want to present the core state of Reddit ATP, uh, its intended function, and, uh, and its role in relation also to DKTP. Uh, then we, will, uh, we would like to discuss with the community, so we view, uh, possible future steps and, uh, and strategy related to the DKTP specification, uh, its adoption. And if time allows, uh, we will also discuss uh, some uh, uh, GitHub, uh, some issues present on GitHub, uh, on SEMIC GitHub. So, uh, moving to the updates for the base registries community, uh, we would just like to introduce again uh, what was uh, about uh, action to base registry and the purpose of this action. Um, so, as you might remember, it was launched in 2016 under the ESA2 program with the purpose of improving national and cross-border access to government data, creating a common framework, uh, common specifications of reusable tools. Um, and as uh, similar uh, actions like CEMIC, this, uh, this uh, ABR action, this access to base registries action was mostly bottom-up, so listening really to the needs of the community and identifying jointly with the community's priorities and, and streams of action. Um, and uh, you might be familiar with some of the main tools and outputs that have been provided so far uh, as part of the base uh community. So, guidelines and trainings that you can find in Interoperable uh, Academy, the RIFE interconnection framework uh, for interconnecting base registries, 
Break the KTP, which is the core uh, of today's webinar, and some related tools that we will list in a few moments, and also um, the ABR action, the access based register action, conducted uh, some uh, uh, monitoring activity uh, on the on the interconnection based registries, producing uh, not every year, but uh, some years ago, some uh, fact sheets on on the adoption on the interconnection based registries across different countries. So we would just like to uh, point out today uh, that uh, currently uh, the ABR, uh, the Access to Base Registries Action, it's uh, closely interrelated with CEMIC, which is the Semantic Interoperability Community, which actually joined forces this year to uh, commonly uh, boost interoperability across public administration in the uh, in the EU. So um, in particular, now CEMIC uh, has. Um, restructured this online presence and uh, has created a SEMIC support center, which includes semantic assets, um, knowledge uh, sharing materials like guidelines and good practices, and all all of these uh, all of these assets that are were also provided under the the framework of access to base registries will be also provided under the support center. So. Um, as we will explain in a few moments, uh, we will encourage you to uh, subscribe also the, the SEMIC Support Center collection in Join Up. Uh, another important development has been that the um, GitHub space related to break the KTP is now also part of the um, of the GitHub space of SEMIC, of the SEMIC GitHub. So if you were not aware of this development, uh, please um, take this into consideration and uh, and feel free to visit the, the, the SEMIC GitHub space also to uh, retrieve information on break the KTP. Um, so, and as part of these activities, as you, as you know, um, as I was mentioning before, um, access to base registries provided also some guidelines for the interconnection of base registries, which are now um, being revised and uh, will, a new version will be published soon. So um, it still is not uh, uh, published, it's not available, this new version you will still find in the ABR join up collection, the, um, the, the old version of the document on ABR uh, guidelines, uh, but we can anticipate to you that this document has been uh, consistently revised, uh, the content has been updated, mostly to improve uh, readability, uh, but also to align it with the overall uh, context of CEMIC uh, uh, as well, given uh, the fact that now the two actions are closely interrelated. Um, and in the, in the guidelines, you will find, uh, obviously, good, pract good practice examples and all solutions for uh, cross-border and cross-sector based interoperability. Uh, but also um, an analysis uh, and discussion of the challenges that might be uh, an hindering factor for interconnecting base registries, and, and in general, some uh, a framework for uh, um, for um, for supporting you or for guiding you in uh, in better connecting base registries. And in particular, uh, when we speak about the framework, the activity uh, of restructuring these guidelines that you will find uh, online uh, has been the attempt has been to uh, align them as much as possible to the um, EIF uh, conceptual models, so to the European Interoperability Framework. Um, so you will you will see that the guidelines have been divided into uh, four main types of guidelines. So legal, uh, related to legal aspects, to governance, to semantic and technical aspects uh, for, um, for interoperability. And you will find it a total of 34 guidelines. Uh, and for many of these, uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, case examples that can provide a concrete, uh, let's say, uh, view, a concrete um, example, uh, in fact, of how uh, the guideline could be put in practice. Uh, here you, you see, for instance, an example that is taken from uh, uh, XROAD, where uh, we have uh, tried to, let's say, present uh, XROAD, uh, XROAD interconnection uh, uh, initiative uh, according to these four uh, main uh, types of 
uh, four main, let's say, categories uh, of guidelines. So you will find uh, also in the document some organizational, legal, and semantic and technical uh, interconnection guidelines related to the to X road. And in general, this framework is a framework that you might also find interesting in your own uh, national environment when trying to structure uh, the process of interconnecting uh, these registries. Um, in addition to this, um, after the past, the last uh, uh, webinar dedicated to the uh, LDS, uh, to the base registry communities and focusing on LDS, we had launched the survey on uh, access to base registries and LDS. And we would like to inform you that the survey is still open. Uh, we intend to close it on the 31st of March. And this would really be um, a good chance for you to um, tell us about your needs. Uh, about your national context regarding the uh, reuse of semantic assets uh, or challenges in the interconnection of base registries, or also to um, inform us about your interest in LDS uh, in its adoption. So um, please, if you if you if you're interested, feel free to uh, to complete the survey to submit it, uh, and this might lead, as it already happened, for uh, some countries that filled in filled it in to follow up interviews with our team uh, to better investigate some aspects that emerge from the from the survey and possibly help the CEMIC team and the access to base registries action to um, to tailor its plans and its strategy for the future to better support your needs. Uh, the link to the survey has been provided in chat. Okay, so these were the these were the um, the main uh, updates for the base registries community. Um, we will also provide in chat uh, later on the link to the uh, SEMIC support center that we collection on join up that we invite you to uh, join. And after uh, after this last information, I will pass the floor to Bert Van uh, that will start to dive into the topic of Brentica TV. Thank you. Beth, the floor is yours. Thank you, Claudio. Um, so today uh, we would like to uh, discuss with you uh, on what is the, the road ahead for Break DKTP. And for doing that, we start first with kind of a status, what is Break DKTP today, what we have around it, and, and then go build up for, uh, further on. Okay, so on the next slide, we will see. Let's... Claudio, you should help me. Yeah, thank you. Uh, um, so the goal is for a base registry is that a base registry is some alternative source of information and we can model it, for instance, according to the core vocabularies. Not only those, but the core vocabularies uh, encode information of core entities in the e-government. And of course, therefore, many of the base registries or typical examples are associated with those core vocabularies. And if we look then to uh, such a base registry, if we want to uh, see what is available around it and start to metadata encode it, then uh, you can in, indeed describe it using DKTP. There's another kind of uh, perspective then for the e-government side is that base registries, you don't just create something to collect data, but as well to share data. And for that, uh, the sharing and to know what you, where, uh, the services that you're offering in an e-government, there we have CPSV, uh, the Public Service Vocabulary. Uh, and if we combine the two, we get, as we look today to the specification, BDKTP. If you look from an outside perspective, these are the two main components into it. And that is how the connection can be built. So in the this is how uh, in the next slide uh, we see that uh, uh, our intention and that's the presentation into BDKTP that the goal of the uh, profile is to allow this modeling of base registries in the context of DKTP connected with the services. Huh? Uh, and the goal in the end, of course, is that if we are able to describe those base registries, we can cater for uh, better uh, exchange of this information across 
in, in governments, but not only uh, internally in member states, but of course across borders. Uh, so, uh, and if we do that, of course, in a agreed way in Europe, we can have a global and European wide perspective of these base registries in the European uh, space. So, in the next slide, we have uh, that we see that for those that have been implemented, uh, uh, that this is a typical case where you see that there's a registry made of base registries. Uh, so you, you see the collection, uh, somebody collects an overview in its member's uh, perspective, what are the base registries, describes that using DCAT AP aspect that is in prereq DCAT AP, and then connects this to the services, the catalog of services they have in the local space. And then you get this uh, triangle uh, of this uh, connection and this view on it. So that is the, the specification as it stands today, but it was not only about the specification. So in the past around VREG DKTP, there have been some supporting tools being built and uh, to uh, support the adoption. And that's one of the questions that we have in the, in the future strategy is what are the tools for the people around the table now uh, that are being used. Um, so there's an harvester and for those who are familiar with CPSV AP, this is actually a variant of uh, the harvest that is uh, used there. So it's tailored towards pre-DEC DCAT AP. The validator, that's more from those who are no DCAT AP, they are more familiar with that. Uh, so they did a similar testbed instance. Uh, and then there is an editor, and again, here it's more from those who are familiar with CPSAP. There's a similar editor, uh, but then um, customized for pre ITP. And so we like to do a quick poll now, uh, and Claudio is going to guide us through to just to get to feel the heat and the warmth uh, of what are you using or not. Yeah. Thank you, Bert. Yeah, we, we try to make this uh, this uh, meeting of the community a bit uh, interactive. Um, so we would like to invite you to participate to this poll, either scanning the QR code that you see on the left side of the slide or either uh, clicking on the link that you will find in chat. Uh, it will lead you to a Slido poll, uh, which uh, basically where you basically will find the question that you have here in the screen. And it's related to the use uh, and adoption of the tools that, uh, to support BKTP that Bert just uh, uh, described. So the question is, have you used BKTP supporting tools? And if yes, indicate which one. So we have the BKTP creator, uh, the editor, um, the mapping tool, the validator, and the harvester. Otherwise, indicate none. Um, you might notice that there are more tools here uh, than those that were described uh, previously. Uh, this is because in the in the history of the um, of the ABR action, access to the registries action, uh, more tools were uh, um, let's say made available throughout uh, the years. Uh, but in the previous slide, we basically uh, identified those that are um, considered, let's say, the most commonly used normally, and that. Um, are also uh, partially in common with other um, with other uh, semantic assets provided also under SEMIC. Um, so uh, maybe we give you a few more seconds to uh, to complete the poll uh, and to and to submit your your answer to Slido, uh, and then we will show you the result. The purpose is not really to discuss these results uh, now, it's just to check the pulse uh, of the community on this, maybe discuss uh, a little bit about it later uh, during the during the, the discussion uh, session that will be after the next uh, uh, presentation. So the poll should be closed. And we can move to see the results. So. We can notice, Bert, that uh, there is some usage of the editor and the validator, uh, but many people in our audience don't really don't really use the tools uh, uh, to support BKTP that are currently available. Um, this is definitely a takeaway that we that we keep in mind for the future, and that we um, 
and that we will take out from this uh, webinar. Um, this poll does not imply uh, any direct action from uh, uh, from CEMIC, from, from the Commission itself. It's just to, uh, let's say, have, as I was saying before, check the pulse of the community and have a better idea what is the actual usage of this tool, if this can be improved or maybe some should be um, not really supported anymore. Okay, so I think we can move uh, we can move on to the next uh, presentation, Bert. And okay, good. I will pass you the floor again. Okay, so now uh, we had this short introduction of state of affairs as today. So now we want to go and look forward to what uh, BREC DCAT EP, what is the future and what is the, the next steps we want to take. And then there we need your help as, as community to assist us to drive into the, the, the most wanted direction. So for that, uh, on the next slide, um, we see that there are certain challenges what we experience today. So if we get some uh, feedback from some external people that encounter for the first time BREC DCAT EP, then there's always the question coming up, what is DCAT, uh, the relationship with DCAT EP? Is it a child, is it a sibling, is it identical? How does it uh, uh, work? What we observed as well in the past that were some of the same issues were being raised in BREC DCAT EP as in the DCAT EP community. So, so while we should have the same discussion on the different places. Uh, and as well, one of the challenges is, of course, if uh, BREC DCAT EP is uh, as it's today, it has to follow the updates and the, uh, the flow and the versioning of DCAT EP in a, to a large extent, because each time there's a new version, so we know that DCAT EP gets a new major release, then we have to align and do the alignment. And so we want to make that uh, more efficient. So for that is, is what we want to do today is to clarify and get a more better grip on what is the position of BREC DCAT EP in the landscape of DCAT EP profiles. Uh, so improve the scope, made more clear, and to ensure that we have the scope of the discussions and so the, the, when we have a discussion that we can say, okay, this is something that is inside BREC DCAT EP, it belongs here, or it is something that is actually either in DCAT EP, either in CPSV EP, so that we don't uh, uh, yeah, have a repetition of the same uh, topics and discussions and that uh, we address them in time. And as a side effect, of course, we get a reduced editorial effort uh, for the whole team. So going back, uh, so to, to assist the discussion, uh, so I quickly mentioned before what our base registries are, so I put up here this, the, the definitions as they are in the, the, the guidelines as well as and in the specification. So be, uh, base registries are trusted, reliable source of basic information, uh, such as uh, what citizenship, uh, businesses, uh, corporation vehicles, driver license, and so all these things where you need to build up uh, uh, a good e-government information. Yeah. And of course, as mentioned, and as a relationship with our public services, they form the cornerstone of those public services. Without these kind of information, you essentially yeah, cannot build it. So you need that uh, information. Yeah. So you see another uh, definition that uh, from the interoperability uh, European interoperability framework comes, which is very related to it. So this is the context for what we set we have for a base registry in mind. Okay, now we have to go to a bit further, and then what does a base registry enable? And and one of the key elements in the storyline of a base registry is that it enables once only. Um, so what is once only principle? Uh, you probably are well aware with it, but essentially it means that during an interaction with a citizen, a user, a business, you ask access or you ask the data once, and from that moment onwards, you start to use that data and you don't need to re-ask and to re-query that data. That's the idea of ones only. If we take that in that perspective, and if you see how the data flows are going to, to be interactions, then you can, Imagine easily that those base registries, and in particular, 
uh, some of them become nuclei in, in the whole network of exchange of data. You, when you, as a citizen, log in to your e-government uh, environment, you need access to the uh, citizen data uh, knowledge base or base registry. You need to know that. And that this is a real citizen and with a certain rights and possible. You might need to have, and so on, uh, safer business, etc. So these are the coming, so these interactions, and they all come there uh, to the care. And it would be good, and this is in the light of European, of, of course, it's good that you know this within your member state or in your region, in your e-government context, who are those uh, base registries, uh, which are the those base, but as well at the European wide. So suppose you want to be a business that is active and interacts on a European wide scale, then it's good to know what are the ones in the in different member states. Uh, and for that reason, that's the, the bottom message, is that it's not, for base registry, it's not only about what is the data that I hold uh, of information, but as well, how I do get access to it. What is the preferred way, what is the good way to access to this base registry? So this notion of uh, APIs and access to it is an important aspect of a base registry. Now, if you go back in, in history and in the flow on it, then you see that the motivation for BREG get AP has been made uh, on two aspects. Uh, one was the idea of let's create such a register at a European wide scale. Uh, so it called in the specification, the European registry of base registries. Um, that was an idea, a motivation for this uh, uh, BIDKTP. There's another motivation and comes more from the once only principle uh, through the single digital gateway regulation, where the, the, say, if we know the BA registries, we can implement this once only, and therefore this is a critical element in the single digital gateway. We can use the, this knowledge and so on. The practice turned out that in the context of the single digital gateway, this knowledge is it's, it was, it's much needed on, on a more technical and lower level, and that this high level BREG DCAT AP view is, is not sufficient and not uh, clear enough uh, for implementing the single digital gateway. So as such, there's no in the history, no specific legislative context that was available to support the existence of BREG DKTP. It's, it's more the principle, the idea that you can build this and, to, and bring this thing together. Now, what we see, and this is in the whole ecosystem of, of uh, data and metadata and so on, we see that there's a lot of new uh, recent legislation uh, appearing and, uh, and popping up. We in, not only have the high value data sets on which DCAT-AP is heavily active, acting, but as well the Data Governance Act. And they are, both are important here because the Data Governance Act is addressing sensitive and restrictive data. So you don't have full access to it. And many of the base registries are in that scope. Uh, so, so citizenship information is such one of that. While on the other hand, the high value data sets, although it's on the, uh, let's say more on the public side of, of uh, data sets, it has uh, introduces this notion of master data, of critical data inside uh, of a government and you should take care of. So the two are somehow coming into the space of um, the base registries. And so one of the examples uh, in the high value data sets is for instance, the, uh, the base registry on businesses. Uh, so that's essentially one that is mentioned in that one. So it comes into a connection with that. So we have to bring this as well together, um, not only in this uh, context, but as well uh, in the broader context that base registries is not about only about persons and vehicles, you could say, but in a more general case, and so the government is large with a lot of base registries and some are more well, let's say frequently visited than others, and that is a broader perspective of data spaces. Huh? So if we are going to describe base registries, then it would be good that we describe them in such a way that they can be used in a broader context of the uh, data spaces as well. 
And finally, to conclude on this slide, is what we have to realize is that over the time years with this legislation and these activities is that data Europa, that EU, as a portal, as an aggregator of all the data sets in Europe, somehow starts to implement this original idea of the European registry of base registries. Uh, so a lot of the base registries are mentioned and findable at least the data set descriptions and the APIs in dataopera.eu. So this is, uh, and even probably more now in the context of the two legislations that are mentioned on the slide, that they will probably even grow that, uh, that amount. So that we have to put in back perspective of uh, b ktp here. So what's on the next slide? And that's where we want to discuss with you. Yeah. So a few slides before we open in the floor. We have been thinking of what are the two possible directions or a few possible directions that we uh, could go forward with BIT KTP. On one hand is that we even furthermore clarify the role of BIT KTP and try to define what is a base registry and how we can going to note that in the scope and in terms of DCAT AP metadata and its connection with the public service. So what are these characteristics? That's direction one. While direction two is, is a novel direction and they say, okay, we are not going to try to identify the borders in the metadata, uh, but we are trying to uh, improve the harmonization of a specific base registry. For instance, core uh, persons or uh, vehicles, etc. So to try to harmonize on that on a cross-border level. So there are two different directions. Um, so direction one in the next slide. Um, then you have to think of questions, and so the, uh, these are questions to raise the discussion. Uh, so okay, if I describe my base registry, how do I can find it back on data open at you at such a portal? And uh, do I want to make it visible? Uh, is it uh, needed? What are the unique properties that would stand out? Uh, what is the border of it? What is inside? What's outside? How do I describe that? And associated with it uh, is the next slide. We have this relationship with a public service. So today in the specification, the two are in the specification, public service, and connected with a data set with a full ag expansion, but the relationship between the two is very uh, open. You may have as a base registry, a reference to a public service. Uh, so uh, the question is, do we want to make it more strict? What do we mean? What is the relationship uh, with it? Do we make it uh, this public service? Which are those? Uh, and that's the issue three there is that the public services as defined in CPSV, to our understanding it is, but you could as well interpret it in some wording as the APIs that are associated with the base registries, which are the preferred ways to access uh, this base registry. So uh, we have to clarify as well uh, that uh, difference. So I'll put up that in, Spot of uh, direction one. If we go to direction two, so I'll take you now to the other, is that uh, what is the idea is that we're going to deep dive in different entities and try to collect and to harmonize them. And we could, as kind of a list of, of act, uh, let's say, activities, take the ones from the core vocabularies and try to work for these and, and a set of uh, uh, rules and metadata documentation that they are, are aligned. Uh, so this is becomes more towards data harmonization, more towards collaborating API so that you can use uh, a base registry. If you connect to one in Finland, then you actually have a little effort to connect to the same one in um, Spain. So this kind of idea that this, the, the hurdles are limited uh, in this domain. But that will be domain specific because each domain might have its own way of interacting. So those are the two things that we uh, 
uh, want to bring up. So we, the goal is that we see BREC DKTP just more as just the technical union of DKTP and CPSCPEP. Because if that is the outcome of it, then we better, and then it's, uh, it's for everybody clear that discussions on DKTP happen on DKTP, so the ones on CPSV on CPSV, and you can still combine them by having the relationship uh, between the two uh, at when it's needed. Uh, so we would like to open up the floor to you, which you prefer on, on what are the ideas, uh, what do you feel, um, how we should address this uh, this future, this strategy, uh, the strategy of uh, BREC DKTP. Um, I see Anna Rosa raise her hand. Thank you. Um, uh, regardless the two directions you you have supposed described, I mean that the, the I think that the main issue here is to identify the use cases. I mean, in the first um, option, in the first direction, you use the, the typical as a user I want. And I think that this is the the, the starting point. I mean, as Thank a you. user, uh, given any kind of user, competence authority, um, applicant for user for public services, whatever, what is uh, the uses that uh, we can foresee for this uh, be be rich the KTP. That is, from my point of view, the starting point. And um, on the other hand, uh, for transparency, for internal transparency, perhaps base registries, the existence of base registries is the most important. But for the use of base registries, is not so important. I mean, when you are using the information held in base registries, you are using services. You are you are not you are not accessing directly the base registry at all. Uh, so okay, it would be nice to to for transparency to have this uh, model for. What are the base registries in my country? What are the competence authorities and so on? But first, competence authorities used to change, at least in Spain, <laughs> quite often. Oh, and, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it is uh, hard to maintain that information up to date, <clears throat> updated. Um, then um, for, for, for the users, for the applicants of public services, what they need to know is not the <clears throat> the service in the in in the in a, in the way of an API, but the service in a way of the of a delivery service, a delivery public service, <coughs> to obtain the, the the information they need. No, so information, evidence, whatever. So because at the end, the information held in base registries are um, mostly personal data of uh, natural and legal persons, both of them. So summarizing, we need these use cases, these uses, and then when we agree on which, which are the most interesting uses, perhaps, we can decide on the direction. Thank you. So I, I hear one of the use cases, uh, Claude, that we should register here from Ana Rosa is the one of internal transparency. Um, uh, that's one of the use cases. You didn't mention it, so it's a new one. Huh? I yeah, knew. but precisely that that example is not uh, <clears throat> strong enough to invest the efforts we need to invest 
to do so. Yeah, but that's but anyhow, it's a use case, huh? It's a yeah, need, yeah, huh? that's true. So, so it's a use case, and 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 that I don't want to yet, yes, just at this moment, uh, uh, assign how much value it is. That's I leave open. I want to collect more of those use cases. Um, do we have? I see a couple of questions in in chat, and also I think a, a raised hand. Uh, so maybe we, we can answer to the first question in chat by Matthias. Do you have two names for the same thing? Is a base registry the same thing as a high value data set? No, uh, it's not the same. But in one case, uh, when you look to uh, in the high value data set, there's a domain on uh, business information. Uh, so on businesses, then it corresponds a lot to what is the base registry of business information. That's one example, just to say that the legislation is overlapping and is connected sometimes um, with this notion of, of base registries. In the base registry is a broader notion. It's not picked or associated with a single legislative uh, initiation uh, definition at EU level, I think, unless somebody corrects me, um, but it's more the idea that is there. There might be member states that there is have a definition, huh? so there might be a legal foundation for something that is called authoritative source or base registry, and then it's in that member state's uh, a legal basis. Yeah, uh, Rita, do you want to do you want to ask a question or uh, uh, give your contribution before we go to the next question in chat? Yes, I would like to discuss on this uh, your question. Because I think that, uh, in a way, your question is it uh, this or that is a bit confusing because I think that we, in, in a way, need both of them. Uh, I mean, that in very high level, we need some kind of coherence. That, for example, we have in Finland modeled the core vocabularies. And uh, when there were six different core vocabularies and they were not coherent with each other, it was very difficult because should we take this or that? So that I think that in high level, we should have that coherence that what we mean by person. And then when we have had that high level agreed, then under that we need, uh, so to say, domain specific uh, modeling or information or descriptions because they are more like when you, as, as Anna said, there are use cases. They may have different use cases in different domains. So that in that sense, when we are going deeper and we actually really want to change that information and we make APIs and so on, then we need, I think, more domain-specific information or descriptions. Could I clarify my question a bit? I think the since you claim that the, the CPSV AP and DCAT AP were two pillars of what the BREG DCAT AP uh, BREG is that's about today, it, yeah, so, yeah. It, it felt like uh, and the CPSV AP, AP the the public service is a very high level thing. It's not the actual registry must be described, I think, as a data service to a large extent. And, mm -hmm. the, and the high level value data sets are, we are discussing how to express them using DCAT AP and that there should be a connected data service. And from that perspective, it seems like there is a very large overlap, especially since the, BREG, uh, the base registry is about the central, the, 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 the really important ones in the society. Yeah, and that's indeed, that is one of the observations that we make indeed, that if this is too high level overlapping, yeah, it mm. might be that, uh, yeah, the need for BREG DCAT EP, if it's only for internal transparency, so I take the, the use case from Ana Rosa, if that's the only one, then it becomes hard to say, okay, how much effort do we have to spend into PREG DCAT EP as such then? Um, yes. 
Uh, maybe we can also move to two questions that we have uh, in chat uh, or two observations. One is from Norman uh, from Malta that says we have a catalog of data, both digital and paper, for data discovery purposes. And our point of origin for the catalog are the actual laws of Malta. While Edwin, uh, on the other side, he says that in his country, they have a semantic catalog of base registries uh, for nat national reuse. And so what is a good argument, a good argument for supporting a uh, Bregdica DP? Like what is the added value for uh, national uh, government institutes and citizens? Okay, um, so I think if I take the last one, so having an, a national catalog of, of the base registries, which corresponds to the, as well to the use case that Ana Rosa mentions, um, that you, it's good to have or to give this transparency or to have this uh, as a guidance for internal structuring and forward. So I think this is valuable. At this moment, if we take the metadata descriptions according to BregDink at EP, uh, take that and we apply it to that uh, catalog of base registries, and you would then upload and harvest that information into dataeuropa.eu, you would not see the difference between a normal data set and the one that comes from this catalog of base registries. The difference will be, yeah, it's very hard to find from where it then comes, just based looking to the metadata of data set and the services, uh, the, the, the data services or distributions that are associated into it. So there's nothing uniquely additionally identifiable that this was coming from that. Um, so that's my question. Is that a need that we feel that we want to make that catalog of base registries as uh, from Edwin Wisse visible in some way those entities in a larger collection? So it can, it's useful, I think, for internal or let's say management or strategic or whatever additional reasons so that the usefulness is for that but that not necessarily means you need BREC DCAT EP for it at the moment if you purely take the DCAT EP and you create a catalog for it you have at this moment the same potential unless there's something additional we don't know so Edwin this is correct I hope uh, in your experience too Yes, thank you. Um, and then to the question for uh, Norman. Uh, um, yeah, I think we can, we have the question from Mantas that says that he needs understanding the KTP is mostly about files, uh, but actually ignoring what is inside those files. So how could be annotated to set, to tell that there is, that they contain a person, organization, location, et cetera, et cetera. DCAT EP is, uh, of DCAT in general, is, is about you describe a data set, and the data set is an abstract notion, a collection, collection of data, and that collection of data can be a collection of persons or organizations. And that collection, if that is managed into a digital system, with its APIs and so on, and then there's a unity that you can bring forward typically as the base registry of persons, organizations, or locations. So it's the, the critical infrastructure you put up and information you put up for a base registry, that's the boundary. Um, so that's, it's, it's sometimes a bit fake on that level, but that would match the metadata interpretation and as it's done today in BREC TKTP, no? so a base registry would describe in that way with those information that are critical and that you find you, uh, somebody should know about my base registry. And if you want to give more details about the schema or the rules, you have these uh, properties like conforms to and so on, where you can point to the schema. 
can I add a bit uh, about this question? Uh, sure. For example, how do you know if uh, all countries uh, have person? For example, uh, how, how do you find that uh, all persons in all countries, if they have different registries and different data sets? So how do you that's indeed it is a correct point. At this moment, if I start querying dataopa.eu, it is virtually impossible to find this list of 28 uh, nicely base registries if they would be well documented, etc., available in Dataopa. Uh, so if they if they would be well documented and they would be all nicely harvested, it's hard to find them. Uh, so, do we want to support that objective? Uh, um, Matthias? Matthias, yes, yeah. So, maybe this is a little bit out of, of, of the main track here, but there is one area which I feel that are lacking when it comes to describing data sets, data services, public services, the connections between them, and that's uh, how, what, when you have this conforms to relation from a data set to a specification, th there is this prof vocabulary where you can describe a specification or a standard. Mm -hmm. And it was provided by V3C in the work, um, data exchange working group. And I think that that's one piece of the puzzle that you, we could start investigate and see if that can help in defining a, uh, establishing a way of st defining specifications that is reu that are reusable. Today, you seldom have the same URL for a single specification. You have a range of different URLs used. Uh, yes. So it's, e it's not so easy to reference a schema or a specification from one data set to know that, oh, yes, this one is actually following the core vocabulary person. It, because it's yeah it's it's not um, there's no neither a standard nor nor a, an agreed upon way of doing this. So, if we want to help us in Europe to orchestrate and understand what is the content inside of our data sets in a deeper manner, I think we would need something like that, something like the prof vocabulary, um, and an, an initiative around collecting these specifications, maybe if publication office could do that or, or some other um, actor um, and, and, and a mechanism for registering new specifications and exchanging knowledge about these specifications. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think this is a good initiative. Uh, it's on our, let's say, uh, CIMIC team rather, this uh, work, because it has been uh, reinitiated. So it's uh, the activity on, on the prof vocabulary is reinitiated. So it's anyhow already on the radar. But how to use and what is the best way to handle it, that's still open. Um, are there any others that are raising let's say use cases of say okay in my country or my context there are um, let's say this is where i need this list of base registries for and for that it's it's really an aid uh, to have such a an overview um, Is it on the table to just ignore BREG DCAT AP in the future and say, we don't need it? Is that one option? Because it wasn't listed as one of the options. That is the, uh, that is indeed cost of mind. It was, uh, we didn't deliberately put it up as one of the options now, because we first want to go see if there's motivation sufficiently go forward with it. Um, but as it stands today, there is no uh, loss uh, in, in, in information and in management to, to stop uh, BREG DKTP's activities today because all the information and all the constraints are addressed either on DKT AP level, either on the CPSV AP level. So, and you can just combine them. 
that's still valid and that leads to PDTK TP at the moment. So it is on the table if we feel as a community that this is the best option to to wrap it and then to make it for everybody clear um, that we didn't miss anything. So that's the goal. And the goal of the meeting is as well to to find did we miss anything that we don't have to say okay we stop and then half a year later we realize okay that was the best place for PID KTP and we re enable it. Um, so that we try to be a stepwise process on it. So it's possible outcome but not let's say in initiated. The name the my question earlier about the naming was in this direction. I wanted to know whether if, if we more or less are talking about the same thing, if we still need to talk about base registers, they need to be defined a little bit more clear. I still have a hard time grasping what it is meant with it. It's indeed. Uh, the definition of a base registry at this moment is very, very open um, and it's not very limitative. Uh, uh, so it captures many things. Um, uh, so that could, if there's some suggestions um, from the community to, do, let's say, this is a critical element um, that we could add to it. Um, yeah. So, uh, Claudio, you can put up maybe the definition uh, back slide uh, if that's possible. Um, yeah. Um, sorry, Bert, which slide? The slides uh, with the definition of, of uh, a base registry. Uh, yeah. So that's what you here see. It is very open, huh? so it's a trusted and reliable source of basic information and a cornerstone of, for public services um, and essential service or entities in public administration management. So you see that this is a very open uh, definition and it's very hard from the definition just to uh, say, okay, this is now the unique element that we want to use to board or to, to make uh, a list of uh, uh, let's say visitors to uh, or the statistics about the vis how many visitors uh, to the swimming pool in, in the local city, um, if that is a base registry or not. Um, I think we are getting close to our time available, but maybe if one or two from the audience want still to raise their hand and 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 provide their inputs. Uh, I think we still have some time. Uh, otherwise, we can proceed to wrap up uh, or to another poll. Uh, Edwin, sorry, I didn't mean to uh, raise my head. Okay, so I see uh, uh, Ansi. Uh, it's a new voice, uh, so I still find it difficult to understand what is added value we get for saving such and creating a de dedicated DKTP variant for it. Um, is that uh, your feeling that you can handle it with just DKTP uh, at the moment on your side, in your context, and you feel that this is sufficient? Yes, if you can hear me uh, from the, the Finnish viewpoint, uh, we have a bunch of base registries which are considered essential for the, the uh, smooth functioning of the, the, the society. But um, I'm kind of like, we can handle the situation as is and we can describe those as, as data repositories using DCAT AP. So I'm kind of like, not finding any added value, what would it bring to label such registries as base registries when everyone already knows that they're base registries, at least in the national context? Okay, yeah, so that's that's a would it be, and I think then this last question to you then, and I'll give the word to Matthias. Um, 
um, suppose we do a little bit more of uh, vertical harmonization, so direction two, and that we, let's say, uh, can identify those APIs that uh, provide data according to a commonly agreed data model, uh, like the core vocabularies or something like this. Um, would that be helpful or do you think is that an additional need in your context on like, let's say an aid in your context or not um Oh, and see if. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just going to ask. Are you asking me? Um, yeah, was asking you or, yeah, or because yeah. in your case, yeah. sorry, it was um, in your case. Kind of, well, you know, taking a very strict approach, um, even even what you just proposed, um, I think we might easily get by without doing that. But that would be sort of like a more more worthwhile option to at least consider. Let's put it that way. Okay, thank you for your feedback. Then mm, I think Matthias, yeah, that you. Yeah, I think just uh, maybe we should refine the definition and think if we can bring the discussion into the same fora as we're discussing how to mark things as high value data sets. And yep. generalize if we need it, then we take the same approach as with high value data sets. Either we are this kind of. Um, um, what is it called? The data set uh, quali um, quality vocabulary or via direct um, properties. Yeah, so this is was as well one of the options that we had in mind was, but then it's attaching to uh, DCAT EP to have an annex like uh, high, uh, DCAT EP for the uh, high value data sets and annex and DCAT EP for base registries, where we would highlight, let's say, some best practices for metadata annotation of what would be called base registries. Um, that would be uh, bringing the formulation closer to one of the specifications. So, so we will follow then more naturally the flow of DCAT EP. Uh, so it would normally not change too much. Uh, so if we add the align with three because I think uh, Mantas was asking about that. But then it would be an annex say, okay, the rules still apply. There's nothing changed. You still continue with it. Uh, it's just a, a little bit of annex to it. That is was an alternative formulation what we had as well in mind. Uh, if there was substantial elements to be discussed on it, but we can do this. Huh? So we can take the notion of base registries, add this in to it and see what we can take and formulate it in this way. I, I would vote on that as an appendix to the DCAT AP next version. Only thing that remains from, from my perspective, what I don't understand fully is the relation to CPC AP. If there is anything that is provided in the B current uh, BREG DCAT AP, uh, that needs to be somehow clarified. There is uh, CPSV produces, I think, property yeah. that connects the two that is already in the CPSV P AP um, profile. Is there anything else? I haven't read through it no, in detail. I, at this moment, not. So that's one of the question. That's the question on GitHub number three. What is the relationship and how strong okay. we want to make it? And this is in the broad discussion that we want to say, if this is just to highlight, we can add this in the uh, uh, appendix and say, okay, look, uh, if you want to connect and it's good to connect for base registries with your public services, to at least to one of them that you're not a standalone, uh, then uh, that could be mentioned on that. Uh, but one other topic of idea we had was to make it mandatory and it was, other proposal, but before that, uh, uh, we would like then to have a broader discussion on this relationship. Right. Mm. Bert, I think we are uh, unfortunately running out of time. We would need indeed more uh, space for the discussion. 
Um, but maybe we can proceed to wrap up for this round and, uh, and obviously the, conver the discussion will continue in the future, maybe in other meeting or in any case, uh, yeah, the community knows that they can reach out to us and, and we can even set up meetings to, to discuss uh, more in depth about these, uh, these topics. Um, yeah. Shall we do a poll just to, to feel the water still? Uh, yes, um, we have, we had prepared two polls because we didn't know which one to pick up front so <laughs> and what would be the outcome. Um, shall we take the first, but I don't know if it's still possible to change something on it, but, um, uh, I would like to do then this one first. Um, and then I have another question because of the annex. That's the, the new question I would like to have a poll on, uh, I don't know uh, how we can do it, uh, but uh, let's try to do this one first. Yeah. If any of, of out of this discussion we had today, now if there any of the directions is in favor. Um, I think you need to clarify a bit one and two options here. What do you mean with strength in this specific role? That means that you still want to have the ECAT VREG uh, around as a separate specification? Is that direction yes. one? Yes, that's direction one as a separate specification uh, um, with its own rights and, and potential and so on. Uh, and, but we have then to be more specific on what is the definition of a base race and have a good use cases for that. Uh, as Ana Rosa mentioned, uh, we need to have a good foundation of the, the use cases to continue on that. That's for direction one. Direction two is using and uh, limiting the, the focus of BRECDP, but then to, let's say, for instance, on BRECDP for person data of person uh, or for businesses. Uh, so to do vertical uh, efforts and to make that more visible, to spend effort on, on the vertical line. Yeah, people are voting, so we wait a little bit and then we can provide the results. Okay, I think we can close the poll now. But again, um, unfortunately, there was not so much time during this uh, meeting. Uh, but of course, you are encouraged to send us an email uh, or yeah, to feedback to... on GitHub. Uh, so we will. Um, I'll put the link of the BREG DKTP as well in the chat. Yeah. So here we have the the result that was more or less uh, probably expected. No. So there's not there's not a specific interest uh, in either direction one or two, and probably none of the above is so uh, appealing, at least for uh, for the majority of the voters. Um, so yeah, thanks, Bert, also for providing the link to to GitHub. So, uh, I don't know. If you I want to comment to one, the one question, and that's uh, we didn't provide the slider for that, but this is the annex uh, question. Huh? And I would maybe we can do it on on Git um, or just on the uh, on the the chat. Um, if you see BREC DCAT AP as an annex to DCAT AP, yeah. like similar like the high value data sets uh, but a shorter version probably if you favor for that huh in that formulation can you say plus one if you say that it's not of a uh, good idea then you say minus one so then you mean that you we have to look much more into an alternative
C plus one from uh, many. If you don't know, put a zero. Then we we have a total number. Then then we can somehow quickly can see how many of the participants have made up their minds. We have one zero, but then many many plus one. Uh, then the comment of ANSI is if we need to describe uh, the the base registry separately, then I agree uh, as an appendix of. On, on having ready KTP as an appendix of DKTP, as uh, mentioned earlier. All right, also Lesia. Please. Okay, I think we can uh, we can move on. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for this uh, feedback. This helps us a lot to or at least to to put the things in the right perspective. Um, Okay, so the, the other slide, though, I would pass that we already did. Uh, so that's uh, yeah. So maybe we can proceed to 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 wrap up and just to to close our our meeting. Um, yeah. So next steps, obviously, we will take into consideration all your uh, comments and suggestions and inputs, and also the polls. Uh, as, as we were saying before, this will not be. Uh, this will not trigger immediate uh, action, let's say, uh, but it will definitely they will definitely be taken into consideration for uh, defining the the approach for the future of Brexit KTP. Um, so, if you have anything else you would like to add or discuss or ask, in the meantime, write it in chat before uh, before the end of the meeting. Uh, at the same time, we would like to inform you. Uh, that uh, on the 21st of April, there will be another uh, um, event related to uh, LDS specification. Um, so if you have participated in the first one, and even if you have not, uh, it might be interesting for you, um, for you to attend. And as mentioned earlier, there will be the publication uh, in the relatively near future of the new, of the updated guidelines on access to base registries. That will be found uh, on uh, will be available for uh, for a consultation on the semi support center so online. Uh, speaking about the semi support center, you will find the link in in chat and yeah again please uh, join join also this collection because uh, um, yeah the online presence of semi has been uh, massively uh, reworked and and revised and now all the um, all the relevant uh, specifications, but also all the resources like guidelines and trainings are way, way better accessible. So uh, it might be really interesting for you or for your colleagues to 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 consult uh, and these resources. Uh, so yeah, in ch in chat you will find the link, uh, and you just have to press on the button join the collection on Jena to to subscribe. Also this one. And again, a reminder of the of the survey that is still open uh, on based based registration LDS. Uh, yeah, don't miss the chance to let us know what are your uh, what are your challenges, what are your needs, uh, in general your point of view on on uh, uh, on base registries and uh, linked data event streams. So that's all from uh, same team from today. Uh, we hope that you uh, you enjoyed the the webinar. You found it useful. Uh, definitely, it was for us. And thank you very much for attending. And uh, soon you will also find online the recording and the a summary report of this meeting that you can circulate internally in your organization. Thank you very much, and have a good uh, rest of the afternoon. Goodbye. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.